Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome once again to the eastern wing of the Stink Bug Works. The, uh, the mad scientist, Dr. Jet, has been busy working away on jet steppers, and I think I've reached a conclusion and uh, a final design. The final design, I'm going to use this little motor, the $17 motor, the expensive motor. But I think that motor is going to be better than the $5 motor. The $5 motor was a bit much. It uh, let the magic smoke out of the speed control and propellers aren't as easy to get. So here's the plan for the jet stepper. Um, I'm going to make plans available. I can actually uh, cut parts out like that if you want parts pre-cut. But it's so simple to make. All you need is plans and specifications. Plus a couple of little special parts. And that's where this comes in. I have just sent the, the files to my laser cutter. Actually, a different guy. Uh, a laser cutter that's going to laser cut some motor mounts for this motor that'll put it over at a little bit of an angle so the leads will be coming off in a nice convenient area. You see where the leads were coming off? They were either down low or they'd be coming up high. And so I'm going to have them so they'll come out the side here and make it real easy. And uh, I think the speed control is going to live back here. So you can move that around for, for weight adjustment. And of course, the servo and receiver is still gonna go up here. That's gonna be the plan. Also, the plan is going to be to use a three millimeter shaft, three millimeter brass tube, or in if you wanna save weight, you can use an aluminum tube, but you use a three millimeter brass tube with some special Teflon bearings or bushings in there, and I have the Teflon. So uh, I'll make the Teflon and the motor mounts available. And then to make a coupler, motor coupler, like I did here on Prototype 5, it's real easy. You get some three millimeter wheel collars and you simply slip them over a short piece of three millimeter brass tube and um, put green sauce in and then clamp it onto your shaft. I would recommend drilling and tapping the hole, the uh, grub screw hole in the wheel collar all the way through the brass tube if you happen to have drills and taps. So your end result will look sort of like this. You'll have a wheel collar with a larger diameter because this shaft is, in fact, two millimeters. Now, TFL makes two millimeter shafts, but they're incredibly slow to ship. So... If push comes to shove, I can go to Small Drive Parts Incorporated and uh, get precision machine two millimeter shafts and then just cut threads on the end of them. That's, I mean, I can do that. So this is prototype, uh, God, what is this? Prototype seven. And since I'm going to use that uh, Outrunner motor, it's going to be higher than the... Uh, boat so it's going to get a little it's going to get a little blister on it so once i you know populate and set the motor in i'll glue this on and we'll we'll make a hatch with a blister on it so that's going to be the final design of the jet stepper i'm going to use um this little motor i'm going to use a two millimeter shaft in fact, uh, this shaft and this propeller, this propeller you can get from Steve at OSE, and they're cheap. They're six or seven dollars. And uh, this hull is going to be donors for a lot of this. I'm going to use this shaft, this 
receiver, this servo, this turn fin. Um, I have a bunch of these rudders, so that's not a big deal. But uh, I'm going to steal parts off of this to finish up that prototype. And then I think I'll call the jet stepper done. I'll produce plans. You guys can follow the plans, build your own jet steppers, and race the damn things. Uh, uh, they're totally open for creative design. In fact, I was thinking, rather than having all this open back here, there's a whole bunch of boat that really isn't necessary. This thing could look like a little stingray with just enough haul here. <laughs> It looked kind of silly, but you know, with just enough hull to hold the battery and whatever hardware and then cut away everything that just isn't necessary. So, um, and it still meets the rules, you know, length, primarily foam. So there you go. That's where the jet stepper is going. It's going to be ready for, uh, uh, um, Dissemination of plans, and if if you guys want, I can cut a bunch of parts. I mean, this isn't hard to cut parts. Oh, another thing, too. I had dinner with Steve New last night, and we were talking about Delta Wines versus Y Wines and timing and such. And Steve, well, Steve knows a bit about motors. And... He told me, and this is straight from the evil doctor's mouth, that performance-wise and timing-wise and timing requirement-wise, there's not really a whole lot of difference between Delta Wines and Y Wines. What you can do with a Y Wind is, uh, Deltas and Ys, they like to run around 8 degrees. You know, what you can do with a Y wind is you can start pushing the timing up on the Y winds and you can gain a small percentage of RPM, but your efficiency goes way down, which means your motor's going to be generating a lot of heat. So, unless you're doing you know, your team jag and you're trying to break 250 miles an hour, you really don't need to push the timing that much for fun running. Yeah, if you're going out to the speed run spot and you want to get your PB, absolutely push it up to the max. But for just running at the park pond and having fun out at Lake, Lake Poway, Keep your timing reasonable. It'll keep temperatures down. Your batteries will last longer. Your ESCs will last longer. You won't let the magic smoke out of them. So, uh, so I learned a little something last night about Delta Wines, Y Wines, and uh, timing. So, yeah, you can get aggressive on timing, but you pay a price for it. Okay, I think I've covered everything I want to cover. I'll jet out then.